what has happened in the recent past in this country is most disturbing and if i may only share with you four things that have happened this year itself first in the beginning of the year you had a bbc documentary in fact you had two documentaries speaking about our present prime minister chief minister of gujarat they were promptly banned and after the ban the bbc was harassed by having tax raids upon it this is the first difficult question of an incident that took place early this year later in the year you had the supreme court decide as to how election commissioners should be appointed something very very crucial because if election commissioners happen to be partisan then there is no free and fair election and there is no democracy so the supreme court stated in an interim order that until parliament decides because article 324 which speaks of the conduct of elections specifically says that until parliament so decides it shall be the president then went on to say that it would be fair if you are going to have independent persons as election commissioners to have the president sorry to have the prime minister to have the chief justice of india and to have the leader of the opposition as the three persons who will now appoint election commissioners most unfortunately we find that a bill was moved in the rajya sabha which has now become an act of course it will go to the lok sabha and become an act in in no time in which the chief justice is substituted by a minister appointed by the prime minister now this is the second most disturbing feature because if as a matter of fact you are going to get the chief election commissioner and other election commissioner appointed in this fashion free and fair elections are going to become a chimera so this is the second disturbing fact that we found this year itself the third disturbing fact that we found this year is a governor of a traditionally minority government state that is kerala sitting over bills for periods of up to 23 months when the supreme court rapped him on his knuckles what did he do there were eight such bills one bill was assented to seven bills were referred to the president now this again is a very disturbing feature because if there is a wholesale reference to the president then the legislative activity of the states comes to a standstill because unlike a governor sending back a bill and then after it is sent back the governor then has to sign it once it lands up at the center's door and the center says no that's the death that's the death of the bill it's over so this was the third most disturbing feature this year and the fourth had its impact a tremendous impact on federalism which was the recent supreme court judgment on the abrogation of article 370 now the recent supreme court judgment i'll deal with a little later but suffice it to say that the moment a state is divided into two union territories which is what was done here the first question is why was this done what was the need because you had already had president's rule in the state you were administering it from the center so why did you need this you needed this because you wish to bypass a very very important article in article 356 sub article 5 now 3 356 essentially deals with circumstances in which there is a constitutional breakdown in a state and the center takes over but then it is hedged with conditions one of the most important conditions being as to time in no circumstance can it go beyond one year this is very important to remember in no circumstance except to which is given in 356 5 
and neither of them obtain it. First circumstance is that you should have a national emergency. And the second circumstance is that the election commission should say that elections are not possible in that state. Neither of which obtain. So how do you bypass this? You bypass it by this ingenious method of making the state union territories where you have direct central control and no problem as to time. So essentially what has happened is that this could have continued until the Supreme Court decided the matter. In fact, it took four years for the Supreme Court to decide the matter. It was in 2019 that the state was declared as two union territories. The decision has just come. And elections, hopefully, are going to be held by September next year. So we have had no democratic government in this state for five years, which could have continued indefinitely. This is a very, very, very disturbing feature. And the Supreme Court did not decide this question. Now, it didn't decide the question because it said, we accept the assurance of the Solicitor General of India that statehood will follow very shortly and that elections will be held. Now, I remember I had said in Shreya Singhal, which was one of my early judgments, when a similar assurance was given to me by the very same Solicitor General, that governments may come and governments may go, but Section 66 capital A of the Information Technology Act goes on forever. What has happened here today is nothing less than this. The Solicitor General does not have the authority to bind any successor government. We are going to have a successor government from May next year. Second, and more importantly, he has no authority whatsoever to bind the legislature. And this is going to be a legislative act. So, to say we won't decide means in effect, you have decided. You have allowed this unconstitutional act to go forward for an indefinite period of time and you have skirted Article 356.5. These are all very disturbing things.